So let me start by uh, giving you kind of a grand vision of Client Look. And this is more for the sake of those folks on the phone who maybe don't know what Client Look is or where it came from or what its, its real purpose is. But Client Look is a cloud-based all-in-one CRM solution. And so why do we still say cloud-based? What, what does that mean? That means that Client Look lives online. You access Client Look through a browser, through any browser through any computer, through any mobile device. It doesn't matter where you are, where you work, how you connect. Your business is always being maintained online and sort of follows you wherever you go. And by all-in-one, we mean that it contains a variety of different modules to support your business. CRM, Customer Relationship Management, is one of those. Contact management, this is the kind of newfangled term for the old, the old way we used to describe contact management. So there's contact management, there's deal tracking, there's property tracking, all of which you're going to see uh, today. Client Look was founded in 2009. We've been around for a while. We've, we've pivoted, we've evolved, and one of the questions that, interestingly enough, I get frequently is, you know, who is your backer? How, how is Client Look financed? Who is the investor in Client Look? And honestly, it was entirely bootstrapped. I mean, I, I guess for the most part, the investment funds came from me, but I like to think that Client Look is customer funded. We fortunately have been one of these very few commercial real estate technology firms that's very profitable and has done so um, based on the success of our of solely of our business. We didn't infuse this with a huge amount of capital to sustain it for some period of losses. Uh, we came out of the gates successful and, and, and you know, we haven't looked back. Client Look is a native commercial real estate app. So this is our way of saying that we are not an add-on to anything. For those of you that have known me for a long time, you know that I got my start in the CRM world um, back in um, on the ACT platform, the old desktop product. I had a, a, a platform called Aries for ACT that I built up over a number of years and sold to CoStar. So when, uh, when eventually after uh, years at CoStar, I left to start Client Look and didn't want to go the add-on path again. The, the the logical add-on would have been Salesforce. And there's a you know in in the commercial real estate marketplace, there's a half a dozen Salesforce add-ons for commercial real estate and client look. So I didn't take that path. So you'll see that the, the distinction of being able to control everything about the program is significant, and, and that's why we are um, we're so special. So. Client Look tracks, as I mentioned, contacts, properties, deals, and now listings, as I'm going to show you today. And we, in the last couple of years, have just exploded. We're now in more than 1,300 cities, uh, seven countries. If you go to our webpage, clientlook.com, you'll see this live interactive map. Um, it's so, so crowded now with these points. It didn't used to be so, but it shows the top 50 cities worldwide where we're located. And um, obviously, we're focused on the U.S., but um, it's, it's fun to see. Okay, so what makes Client Look different? Why why use Client Look compared to any other CRM solution or or Outlook for that matter um, that's out there? So fundamentally, Client Look is designed solely for commercial real estate. As I mentioned, every button, every link, every field, every single feature in our service is meant to facilitate commercial real estate brokerage and nothing else. That's unique. You know, back when I built this add-on for ACT, there were so many compromises that we had to make when you ride on top of some generic CRM product that's made to accommodate a horizontal, you know, horizontal sales world. There's lots of compromises, lots of things you'd never do. Clearly doesn't have those issues. Everything we do, everything you're going to see is based around accelerating deal making for commercial real estate professionals. One of the big kind of, you know, missions we have at Client Look is to not cause complexity. And, and I'll, I'll tell you that the number one reason why CRM implementations fail is due to complexity. There is this disconnect between the features that people shove into their product and the features you use, and a disconnect between the usability of all this stuff. At, at Client Look, we assume that you will never invest any time in training. And in fact, it, it's, it would be arrogant of, of me to think, look, I'm going to invent some system that's going to require two days of training on your part or weeks of training or whatever. There's other solutions that, that have these programs that are astronomically time intensive. And that is such a cost to you 
that we, we didn't want to do that. We want to create a system that out of the box is ready to roll, intuitive, easy, no training, no learning curve um, you know, from day one. So part of architecting this experience in client look that is unique, that is special, that is enabling, was to come up with a solution for the problem of, look, I want to use a CRM, I'm super busy, and I have hours of data entry that I need to do each week to keep it going, but I'm having a hard time doing that. And, and I'm here to tell you that a CRM is one of the most beneficial tools you could ever add to your business, but half of what you have to do in this program is not worth your time. And by that, I simply mean it's, it's valuable work entering your notes, logging the outcomes, scheduling tours, you know, updating your client reports for marketing purposes. This is all stuff you have to do. It, I should say it's stuff that has to be done. It doesn't have to be done by you. So we implemented this virtual assistant service. So there are literally a team of people here at ClientLook that, that work all day long satisfying the requests of our users. People send in photographs of business cards that they want hand input. They send import lists. They call and leave a voicemail with a description of a meeting they just had and a number of next steps. So this team accesses our users' accounts virtually and does all this work, sends out emails then to confirm it. It's great. We like to say that if you're not using ClientLook, you're working too hard. So ClientLook really also takes this, this responsibility of kind of being this hub of technology very seriously and knows that one of the things we have to do is create integrations and connections with the other tools that play a huge role in your business. Research tools, marketing, email systems. So I'm going to show you all of those here today, but that's one of the things that we continue to look for more and more tools that we can help you use in a way that's not redundant uh, and that doesn't cause extra work. Um, last thing here is that Client Look includes as you're going to see a, a a client portal, a war room, if you will. So everything that you do in Client Look can be can be organized and related back to the deals you're working on, and those deals can be shared with your clients. So why is that important? This allows you to provide a level of service that is unprecedented, that is certainly differentiating and helps you get deals. We hear about it all the time, and I'll, I'll show you how that works today. Okay. These are the things that we're going to go through. Contacts, properties, the new listings module, deals in pipeline, how to log updates, and then um, marketing. Throughout this, I'm going to showcase some of our integration partners, and, uh, and you're going to see examples of those. So um, I'm going to move pretty fast, but keep in mind, again, this is being recorded, so you can always look back and review this at your convenience. Okay. This is the new contact screen in ClientLook, and for those of you that are ClientLook users, you should say, oh, this looks pretty familiar. It is familiar, except for the fact that there's a new menu at the top for listings, but in, in general, this is the, the menu at the top is how you navigate through the various modules in ClientLook. And, and look at this screen and appreciate, ideally, the simplicity of it. Can you guess how you add a new contact if you had to in ClientLook? It's this one big button over here in, uh, in the right. That's how easy we want things to be. So how did these contacts get into Client Look? Well, there's a variety of ways. Number one, you can import them. Uh, typically, when people get started with Client Look, they send us a list. This is my list from Outlook or some legacy CRM system or whatever, and we zap those in. You can do your own imports. You can, of course, manually enter uh, contact information anytime you want. Um, you can sync it. Uh, there's a sync tool with Google, and anything that you add to your phone can then just be seamlessly, in real time, synced into ClientLook. Uh, and of course, the virtual assistant team can add contacts for you. You send them business cards. This happens all the time. I go to conferences. I collect a stack of cards, which normally sit on my desk. Now I use my phone. I snap a little a photo of them or a collection of them, email them to the virtual assistant, and they key them all in. It's great. So. Um, so, oh, one thing that you're going to see throughout every screen in Client Look, look in the bottom right corner. See this little icon here? It looks like a little, know, kind of like a little smiley face. But this is your way to connect with the virtual assistant team and our support team live in real time. So our intention is to provide you help 
contextually while you're doing something. So you're here and you're saying, hey, how do I import? You simply click that button and up comes this little pop-up. You're going to see every incident of every question and answer exchange you've ever had in the past, and you simply click new conversation and pose your question. Somebody on the team is standing by in response to you. They can send you links to videos or pages or provide you instructions, whatever. But, but I, I just wanted to point that out because you're going to see that throughout Client Look, and I didn't want you to wonder you know, what that was. Okay. So now um, well, let me point out to you the Groups feature, which is a um, spans all the different modules in Client Look. So one of the challenges you're going to have is over time, you're going to start to accumulate more and more and more and more contact information. We have customers that have 150,000 contacts. Now, these are big installations, but the point is, with a, with a database that large, you can't possibly navigate down to succinct lists, especially for marketing purposes, as you might need. So ClientLook has this concept of groups, where you can put a contact into multiple groups. And then you can click this list here, and I can say, you know, just show me my broker mailing list or my California owners. And it will subdivide, segment a massive list down to this, you know, super focused list um, in, in just a second. All right, so now let's look at um, ways in which we can search. So this is another big distinguishing important feature of Cloudlook is the querying capability. Because again, you're going to keep you're going to keep all this data in here, and it's only good if you can sort of mine it and find opportunities. So the first thing I'll show you is what we call advanced search. So up in the top here, you'll see this little link for advanced search. This this applies. This link is in every module. So if I'm in context, I'm going to search contents of companies or deals or properties. It's always there. But when I click it, I get this simple looking screen with um, a variety of fields. So if I scroll down, I see all my fields here, even custom fields that I might have created. And uh, the point is, it's a way for you to create a really easy, simple query. So, so as you see, I plugged in some fields here. I'm looking for all the contacts in the state of California who are tenants who have a lease coming up before the end of uh, uh, December 2017. So straightforward enough query to say, in most database systems, that's a, that can be a challenge to execute. But in Client Look, it's easy. You just plug in these fields. You basically give the system an example of what you're looking for. You click the search button, and bam, up, up it comes. And you see along the right column there, those are all the lease expirations in our state. So this is the list that meets our criteria. OK, so the more simple way of searching and the more common way is that you use the uh, search list that's up here at the top, this little keyword search where you just type something in, and it instantly finds a match. So I typed in Allman. It, it finds Jessica Allman. I click Jessica's name, and I pull up that record. Okay. So again, that applies to every module, whether you're looking at properties or deals or anything. Use that keyword. Um, it's simple and it's easy. So this is a contacts record. This is where you spend a lot of time. So you pull somebody up, and you can see all the details of their record. Along the left, you've got phone number information, email address, their location. Um, if I scroll down on the left there, you can see things like custom fields. And the, um, the tab on the right here, this updates tab, is where your history with this contact uh, is shown. And this is really valuable. So this is one of the places that takes effort on your part and where the virtual assistant is the, is the perfect complement to your work. So here's where you want to log what you do simply. And the reason you do that is so that in the future, a year from now, you pull up Jessica Alma's record and you know instantly what you last talked about, provided you logged it. My, one of my rules with CRM is to assume I'm never going to remember anything. And I, I don't want to keep facts and figures and dates and things in my head because it just gets overloading. I put everything into here, assuming I'm not going to remember a thing, so that when I pull somebody up, I've got the full recollection of, of everything. But here's one of the really cool ways that information gets in. So we talked about, you know, you can just add an update here. The virtual assistant can key in an update, but you can also email things. Every email that you send will get connected into ClientLook. So you'll see in the middle here, this BCC or forward any contact emails to this email address. This is your personal email address in ClientLook. Every user has one. You don't really have to know that long string of characters. You just click this email me a V card and it sends this little V card to your phone. You add it to your Outlook or your address book. And so in the future, you just, you just BCC ClientLook. But here's how it works. You send an email to anybody. 
one recipient, ten recipients, attach files, BCC client look, your client look email address. That email gets sent to all your recipients. It also gets sent to client look. And client look then looks through all of the recipients and it tries to match those recipients based on email address with recipients in your in your contact list. It creates a single email update and then it relates it, so you'll see here offer, it relates that email to all of the people that it finds in your database. So the, the, the bottom line is forget about having to use folders and all this archaic stuff that you might do in your email system to organize stuff. Client Look organizes everything the way it should be by contact. So when you pull a person up, you see everything you've ever done with them, including their emails. Okay, the activities uh, tab is next. This is where you have the next steps with, in this case, Jessica. You can schedule an event. You can schedule a task. Um, you'll see if you're in a shared database, things that other people have scheduled that are pending, provided they've shared them with, with you. Um, so this is kind of the you know the future uh, as it relates to this contact. Now the properties tab. If you're a client look user, you've seen this before. This is where you relate people and properties together. This is also a big deal because over time you want to create relationships and understand relationships between people and properties. Whatever that relationship might be, they're a tenant, they're an owner, they're a, a broker, they're a property manager, they're an investor, they're a prospect. So the point is in Client Look you can keep properties. You can then relate people and properties together and assign a relationship between the two. And you can have as many relationships as you want. So one person can have five different relationships to the same property, but the outcome is that when I pull up Jessica's record, I see the list of the five properties. I know she's the owner of this one, the past owner of that one, she's a prospect of this one, et cetera, et cetera. I see details on the type, the size, and if I click any of these, it jumps right to that property. So how do you relate contacts and properties together? So there's this big relate a property button here is is your guide. So you simply click relate a property and up comes this pop-up. Now by default, it assumes you're going to relate this person to, to a property that's in client look. Okay, so you see source there, client look, you type in an address and away you go. But here's an example of our of a first point of our new integration. And this this is an integration example with Excelligent. So Excelligent, if you don't know, is uh, a, is a big a commercial real estate research company that provides property information, listings, comps, tenants, ownership data um, um, in 50 plus markets nationally. And if you want to look at where they are, uh, go to Excelligent.com. There's a coverage link there and it will show you. But, so we created this relationship with Excelligent a couple years ago. It's taken us this long to, to create this integration which is really cool. And here's, here's the first point and here's how it works. So Excelligent has a million properties. So I'm an Excelligent subscriber. I want to relate Jessica to an Excelligent property that I know is not in my client list database. In fact, it might even be in another market because with Excelligent I get national access. So here's what I do. I go to this little source field and I'm going to change this to Excelligent. Okay? Over here on the right, I see a list of what Excelligent calls metros. These are markets. So I can choose any of the markets uh, across the country uh, that Excelligent tracks. So I choose one here, Southern California. Then I type in the address of the property that uh, Jessica identified as having some relationship with. So I type in 1450 West. It comes up with a list of all the matching properties based on that little string of characters, and I choose one. Then it asks me, what is the relationship that this contact has with this property? So I choose one. Now, there's a little pick list here. I can choose. These are all customizable. I can choose one. I can choose multiple ones, but I choose she's the owner. That's it. Okay, now I simply click relate this property, and I'm done. So now the property appears here uh, in the list, and, and here's, here's the beautiful thing about this. Okay, So this property, 1450 West 228th Street, wasn't in client look. Based on my selection, it has downloaded all of the property details from Excelligent and created this new property record, linked it all in one fell swoop. So the point is, you are now out of the commercial real estate property research business. You're a broker. You're not meant to go out and canvas these properties and track all this detail and try to keep this data up. Rely on a third-party source who does this 
all day long and leverage that data. So I'm going to show you how we can see more about that when we jump to the property module, but this is a, this is a great example. Okay, deals. These are simply the deals that this person is related to. We're going to talk about deals in a bit, but um, it tells you the status of each deal. So if you're making an offer, you're representing a listing, whatever it is, um, you see that relationship here. Marketing is an example of our MailChimp integration, which you're also going to see an example of. This is, this is, this is cool. So what this tells me is that I've sent Jessica 15 campaigns. She has a 7% open rate and a 7% click rate. Down below, I see the campaign by campaign engagement stats for her. So I know every email she's received, did she open it? How many times did she open it? Did she click on a link in that email? What link did she click on? So this is valuable because you send emails all day long. But you don't know, based, uh, other than based on people's calls back to you or emails back to you, really how they transcribe into demand or who are better prospects than others. This helps you determine that through this MailChimp integration. So I'll, I'll touch on that more in a few minutes. Groups we talked about initially, these are the groups that this person is in, these three. I can click the big edit group membership button there, uh, as you might imagine, and manage the, the, the different relationships this person has with the groups. Okay. Let's jump into properties now and show you some of the new features within here. So up comes the properties list. So this is reminiscent of the previous property list we had in client. Look, oh, one thing I will note is that all of the lists, these big lists that you see here, we've reinvented the way that we display these. You can now choose to have 100 records on the page at the same time, and you can jump through different pages, and it's, it's much more flexible and easy. We've also created new exports so that you can export not only into Excel, but also to PDF, Word, CSV, and HTML with that big new export button in the middle here. But kind of like with contacts, how do these properties get here? Well, typically they're imported, for, again, from some legacy system that you're moving from. So uh, you're using this whole property database or old CRM. You want to migrate those properties in here. We do that every day. Um, you've added properties um, uh, uh, through the virtual assistant. You've added them manually, or I'm going to show you how you can add from a third-party source. But, so let me give you an example first of adding a property. So this big button here, just like with context, add a new property. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to choose manually add a property just to give you an indication of how simple this is. So this is pretty standard. You know, you add the address fields here. You can have custom fields for properties, so you can track anything you want. Um, but you fill out a field, you click save, or add this property, and you've got yourself a new property record. But the more innovative approach, especially if you're an Excelligent subscriber, is, is to choose this add new property option. And this time, choose add from provider. Okay, so up comes this pop-up that you've, you know, you've sort of seen before. So here I can say, all right, I want to add a property that I know I want. It's in Dallas, so I choose source there as Excelligent. I choose the metro of Dallas. I type in the address. It finds it. I click add, and boom, it's downloaded that property into my client account. That property is mine. I can edit the fields, um, and away you go. So the, the goal is here everybody is stop entering properties manually. Rely on a third-party service. So ideally, our source list there grows. Excelligent is by far um, your, your best option with this. Um, choose a service like this that you can just grab properties from, and it gives you all the details. As you're going to see, it, it stays connected to that property, so it updates, uh, and stop doing this yourself. Okay. So let's talk about property searching. Just like we do with contacts, we can do property searches. So again, just like with contacts, we've got this advanced search option up here at the top. So I click that. Up comes this advanced search screen. So here we can do really complex stuff in, in a very, very simple way. Okay, so for example, I'm going to look for properties in the state of California that have a property type of industrial that are uh, at least 100,000 square feet, and that were built between 1995 and 2005. So just to say that is a kind of a mouthful, but in client look, this kind of search is really easy. You can plug in as many different variables as you want in this very simple, easy, intuitive interface, click search, and up comes uh, your results list. So you can see industrial, 100,000 square feet or greater in the state of California. Just like we did with context, you can also search up at the top. 
So if I type in a couple of characters, in this case, MI, I get a list of all the matching properties that have those two characters, and that's obviously that's pretty broad, and I can choose one. So up comes a property record. So we, we had an interesting comment from somebody uh, who, uh, who, who had jumped to a property record before realizing we had done an update yesterday and said, whoa, wait a minute, I just pulled up one of my properties and it looks like it's a different product. And it's true, this is, this is one of the new UI user interface screens that we're experimenting with, which is a full page screen where we can provide more content, more detail. So this is the same property record. If you've got property records in Client Look Now, when you pull them up, they're going to look like this. And, um, and, and so you, you've got this page here with property details. Uh, we know this is an Excelligent linked property because you immediately see the live public record information here from Excelligent over on the right. This is updated live every time this property loads. If we scroll down, we can see more details. We can see custom field information. Oh, and a couple of our key integrations. One is to the Analyst Pro here. Um, this is a great analysis tool. You click this, you can generate all kinds of cool lease analysis, location analysis, um, uh, you know, using that interface. And if you're a Realtor, we integrate with a service called RPR, which is a very powerful, uh, also reporting demographic tool. Um, and you'll get uh, all kinds of output by clicking any of those links um, there. Okay. So now, uh, let me jump over here to the Updates tab for property. Over time, just like with a contact, you will maintain a history of this property, your interactions in this building, property tours. You can also add updates to context records and link them to property. So this, over time, will fill with your proprietary knowledge and intelligence of this building. Activities shows you future activities related to this property. You're not really scheduling something for a property. You're scheduling something for a person and then re relating it to the property. So you can see all that um, there. Availability is, is sort of the first look in, into our new listings module, which I'm going to jump to next. But every property has an availability tab. And you'll see a couple of things. You can add your own listings for sale, for lease, which you see there under the Spaces tab. And um, in the For Sale tab, this is your listings, your company's listings. So that's kind of the fundamental purpose of the listings module company listing management. But in addition, we can see availability from Excelligent. So this is the live um, availability there from Excelligent. We can also see, um, we've got comps. We can also see comp data here. So uh, right now, the only way to get comps in Client Look is, is if you're connected to Excelligent. But here, you're going to see all the lease comp information, all the sale comp information. This is live. This isn't loaded into your database. This isn't downloaded. Every time you pull up this property, if it's connected to Excelligent, you will see that. This list of files are your proprietary files, brochures, offers, any sort of documents, reports, analysis over time that you collect and save for a, a property record. These are images. So we have two sources of images. One is the images that you collect, what we call client look images. You can add any sort of imagery that you want. Or if this is related to Excelligent, you can choose over here on Source, Excelligent, and see all of the imagery that Excelligent has live for this property. Same with people. People, uh, as you saw in Jessica Allman's record, the contact, we can relate context and people together. And if you, if you choose the source here as Client Look, you will see your list of contacts you've related to uh, this property. But in this case, I've chosen Excelligent, and you see literally, in this case, a hundred different contacts that they show is related to this property. Tenants, owners, true owners, property managers, sublet agents, phone numbers, email addresses, all uh, shown here. The deals tab is the deals that you've got going that are related to this property, which we'll touch on in a minute. Marketing, our email campaigns that you've sent in relation to this property, and then of course we can create uh, groups for um, for uh, this property, you know, put this property into various groups. Okay, so let me let me jump into one example that is specifically for Excelligent integration. So, so you have to be an Excelligent subscriber to benefit from this, but let me show you how this works because it's really cool. So here's the scenario. You have lots of properties. Um, you have lots of properties that you, you know, tracked over time that, that aren't related to Excelligent anywhere. You, know, you didn't download them from Excelligent, so there's no connection within those properties. So if we pull up a property in Client Look, this is an, this is an example of one that's, that's what I'll call unimproved. Uh, 
So you'll see improvement information, no data, attributes, no data, land information, no data. Okay, as I scroll down, it's got financials, no data. It's, it's a pretty empty record. All I have on this is the address. But if we scroll down over here on the right, every property record has this external property links option. And, and this is something that, that will, will extend over time to integrate with other services. But right now, if you click this, you'll get this lookup in Excelligent option. So I choose that. So I get a pop-up that looks familiar by now to you. Sources of Excelligent, I've chosen the distinct metro that this property is in, and I type the address of this property. It finds it, Pacific Business Center, okay, that's 25952, yep. I don't have the Pacific Business Center in my record, but so then I select it and I choose link property in the bottom right corner, okay? So when I do this, it gives me a little drop-down message. And, and my options are this, link the property, which means just download a Excelligent ID, link this back to, to them and show me the ongoing intelligence going forward. The second option is, you know, I've, uh, I've, got, a, I've got a little bit of data on this property and, and the data I have I like, so just download anything that Excelligent has that I'm missing. Lastly, download all data. My data is junk. Just give me everything that Excelligent has on this property and make that my pristine new property record. So one way or another, I choose one of the latter two options. And here's what happens. So this is the kind of before property picture. And this is the after property picture. So you'll notice Excelligent public record information, live streaming. You'll notice all of the improvement information that's been filled in. Year built, parking, sprinklers, you'll see the land information. Um, if I scroll through some of the pages now, you'll see the live availability for this, which I didn't have before. You'll see comps. This is all because now it's linked to this live property research service. You'll see images. You'll see people. I didn't have any of this content before. Now I do. So this is an example simply of how you bridge the gap between properties that you have already in ClientLook and they've had for years and how you connect them back to a third-party service. Okay, so now this is, this is another new part of ClientLook, the listings module. So why introduce a listings module? So here's one of the big problems that we uncovered, uh, you know, dealing with thousands and thousands of CRM subscribers. Here's a common issue that everybody has. I don't know how to manage my own listings. I put them in a spreadsheet or we just have a bunch of flyers. So we undertook this mission to help people better organize their listing data and do it in a structured way and do it in a way that we can actually leverage and add efficiency to because of the fact that you can use the virtual assistant as your sort of virtual listing secretary to keep all of this data fresh. So this is the listings list. This is your availability. It's not really meant to be all the availability in the market. That's why you use third-party research services. These are your listings. Who in the company is, is handling this listing? When does the listing expire? What's the address? Who's the owner? Um, all that sort of thing. And things like when was it last edited, um, as you see over there on the right. So how do you add a listing? Well, you can simply type in uh, source their client look type in the address and it, it pulls in all the property details from an existing property record in ClientLook um, and, and adds that property. In, in, in a similar way, you can change that source there to Excelligent and you can add a property to an Excelligent building and it downloads all those fields that you need to create that listing. Year build, zoning, power, parking, clear height, or you know, a, cla a building class or you know anything based on whatever property type you've chosen that you otherwise have to manually enter. You know, forget about doing that. It's that's a, a total thing of the past. So this is an example of how you do that in Excelligent. This is what a property or a listing record looks like. In this case, it's a for lease. You know, you see available space, lease rate. You can have custom fields. You track things like you know listing details. When does it start? When does it expire? It'll track how long things have been on the market. So you have this historical perspective. We can go to the spaces tab. These are the spaces. If this is a multi-tenant for lease opportunity. The, the various spaces that you represent within this property, of course, you can see the full um, property details as well. The people tab demonstrates uh, or displays the list of internal contacts who are the listing brokers on this property. So who in your company is responsible um, for this? 
Um, you can relate this listing to deals so you always know what offers are pending and that sort of thing. Uh, of course, we've got files. This is where you're going to store all your brochures and your templates and reports and things that you might use to help market this uh, listing. Um, we've got images, so this is all the photos and things. Um, and, and why this sort of all uh, uh, is important and comes together is, is because of this publish tab. So here's, here's the kind of next phase of what you can do with this listing. So you've got this listing, and now you want to market it. So we've connected to two different services. One is build out, which lots of you use to create your marketing materials. So you can keep all of your listing data current in cloud, connect it to all your people, do all the things that you want to do with a listing in a CRM, and push all that information into build out without having to, without having to rekey any details at all. So that's kind of the internal listing management. For public listing marketing, we've, we've got a link to commercial search. Okay, and you see these two providers down here. So you can now push your listings into the commercial search service. If you haven't taken a look at this, I'll, I'll give you a, a look at it in just a second. Um, but you can post your listings up there free online, and all you have to do is check, you know, check this box, check either box, and the, and the system will take over for you. Every time you make a change to this listing, it pushes it automatically. Every time you come out of a meeting and you call the virtual assistant and say, hey, my... Uh, my you know, listing on Michelson, um, we're going to change the price of Suite 200 to whatever. They key that in, and those, those changes then get propagated to all these connected services. And th this service, list of service providers will, will um, increase over time, but that's sort of the spirit of how it's all supposed to work. So let me give you a look at you know, commercial search, an example. So you check the commercial search box, and your listing bounces up now to, it's published up to commercial search. This, this happens once a day, by the way. So all your changes get pushed uh, nightly into commercial search. If you haven't gone up here, check it out. It, it's, uh, it's a great free service. It, it's um, heavily trafficked, a great marketing resource for free. So let's look at uh, a listing. So this is a big screen view of my listing. So you see... Uh, my listing is Hollywood Place here, um, but here's why this is a uh, uh, valuable. Here, here's how this all kind of ties together. So you'll see in every one of your online listings, you're going to have this little messaging system here. So if someone were to click that, they get this little pop-up uh, that allows them. So I'm a site visitor. I'm an interested tenant or buyer or whatever, and I want more information on your listing. So I fill this form out, and it gets sent. You, you've probably received things like this in the past. They pile up. So here's what we've architected with Cloudloop. In commercial search, you can uh, actually wire the system, commercial search, to send your leads, every lead that you get, directly to Cloudloop. And when I say directly to Cloudloop, I mean to the virtual assistant. So somebody fills out this lead form in commercial search, um, just click send, you get the email but the virtual assistant also gets the email. And they have instructions. You can add additional instructions here, like add new leads into my prospects group. They have instructions to go in and figure out, is this a duplicate? Uh, is it a new contact? Put in all the details, correct any grammar, spelling errors, um, and even do things like schedule a follow-up call if you choose. But the point is, this is a whole new level of electronic lead management that leverages the exposure of your listing online and it helps you funnel those leads into something that's actionable and will actually work. So the logical, logical kind of next question is, okay, but how about listings on my website? So we've, we've got an answer for that too. And it's this, this great add-on from Excelligent called Direct, Excelligent Direct. So here's how it works. Um, the uh, the, this is an example website, okay, Taylor Commercial. This is kind of a fictitious company that we maintain internally. Uh, and here's how it works. So you want listings on your website, okay? But the hassle has always been, oh, I have to maintain them, and how do I update them, and who's got to do that, and how does it work? Here's the solution. You maintain those listings in ClientLook, period. That's all you have to do. Those listings will electronically push to commercial search, and Excelligent sells this little tool that will carve out your listings and display them on your website. Okay, so thank you, Alan, for uh, for communicating. So here is an example of of your listings on your website that are sourced in ClientLook. You're maintaining this in ClientLook, and as you change details overnight, it will update on your website. This is easy, simple, it takes no 
no manual uh, effort on your part on your website. Once you set this widget up, you're done. And forever you will have this beautiful design interface online and, um, <laughs> and you'll be off and running. But here's, here's another advantage of this. So remember we, we looked at that uh, sort of lead feature in commercial search. You have that same capability in your own website. So you'll have this little message box here in your listings on your website. So I am an interested tenant, an owner, an investor, buyer. I click this. I get a similar pop-up. This is the same thing that you saw in commercial search, but this is now in your website. I fill out the form and send you that, that, that email. The same email is copied back to the virtual assistant and that lead is handled exactly the same way as it is in commercial search. So the point is, all of your electronic lead capture tools now flow directly into ClientLook and somebody is manually manipulating this data. There isn't this blind push of junk data into your database. This is a vetted, qualified lead that you can, you can uh, provide instruction to the virtual assistant to actually take actionable efforts, schedule a follow-up call, do whatever, so you manage these the best way. Okay, so that's my whole spin on listing. Let's talk about deals now. So you've got uh, deals that you're working on. What, what is a deal? A deal is any sort of real estate assignment that you might have. Um, it's a tenant rep deal. It's a, it's a listing. It's an investor, buyer rep thing, anything. Anything that has a kind of a start and a finish uh, that you want to track uh, your pipeline around, what's the opportunity, what's the sales stage, who's involved in this deal, both internally and externally. This is what you see in the deals module. Okay, so this is our list of... Um, of deals. So let me jump into a deal. So this record looks very much like a contact record, or a property record. Everything in client look is made to be familiar and similar. So here is a listing that I have and so the updates tab is really the coolest part of the deal. The updates don't typically get entered into the deal. They are linked from other places. So I add a contact update, I link it back to um, to the deal. But the most powerful feature here is, um, is with emails. So for example, here in the middle you'll see BCC or forward deal emails to this address. Each one of your deals has its own email address. And again, you don't have to know this big long address, just click this email me a vCard and ClientLook will send you a, a vCard which you add to Outlook to your phone, your address book that lets you BCC 1629 Covington instead of some obscure email address. So here's how this works. So I send an email to a list of recipients. I BCC this time my deal. So my recipients receive it. I send an offer or attachments or whatever. ClientLook gets that and, and it does the following. It creates an update in ClientLook with the contents of your email. It attaches any files. It links it to all the recipients that it recognizes that you sent it to and it also relates it to this deal. So again, this makes totally redundant all of the deal folders that you're trying to maintain in your email system because it organizes your emails the right way electronically by deal. This email uh, BCC mechanism that I keep talking about is totally agnostic too. It doesn't require a plugin or a download. It doesn't matter if you use Gmail or Outlook or Hotmail or if you're on your phone or your tablet or whatever. It's simple, it's easy. All you have to do is BCC client look and all the work is done for you. So these are the activities for the deal. These are the things that are pending. This is escrow closing instructions. This is future property tours or open houses or anything. This is tasks that you've delegated to other team members all appear here. The people tab are all the people that you've related to this deal, like internal brokers, co-brokers, um, and, and your prospects, but also your clients. So this is one of the places that client look um, really shines. So you can go in here, you can add a client to this deal, and when you do that, you can check a little box that allows them to log in for free into this one deal or, or any deal that you related them to. So what does that mean? That means when you go in and pitch a deal, pitch an assignment to a prospective landlord or whomever, you can describe your ability of having real-time collaboration capability. You're not going to wait for my monthly report, Mr. Client. You can log in anytime and see exactly what's going on. Now, now everything that you put into a deal can be privatized, so you don't have to share everything with your client. But the point is, the fact that they can log into this alone is differentiating 
and likely to get you um, the deal. All right, marketing, this is all the emails that you've sent and connected to this deal. So if your client logs in as an example, they can see the hit rate that you've had, the emails that you've sent, and for your own reference, you can see them here as well. Um, groups lets you subdivide, so you can put you know deals into various groups and, um, and, and track them better that way. All right, so we've talked a lot about updates and emails and things like that, so let me jump into just a, a two-minute overview of how that works. So let's jump to a context record. So here's a contact. Now typically when you're in front of the computer and you're talking to somebody, you're going to fill out um, you know, this update. Uh, I spoke to George about the deal and we made plans to meet next week and click add and you're done. Okay, but there, there are more advanced things that you can do to kind of extend the capability that people really like. So if I click a little more options here, it extends the screen and here's what I can do. I can add. Uh, first of all, I could change the category. This wasn't a call, it was a meeting or a property tour or any custom category you want to come up with. You can change the date. I can relate it to more people. It wasn't just George I met with, it was his CFO and his operations guy and whatever. I can choose more internal users. It was not just me, but it was it was John and Christopher and Chuck. We all went to this meeting. I can relate it to one or more deals. So if you're a landlord rep, this is particularly valuable. So a lot of times you will talk to somebody about more than one deal. So in, in essence, you can create one update, say I talked to George about the deal, I sent him a brochure, and link that to five different deals. In essence, you then updated the, the activity report for five different clients at once. You can relate this to properties. You can choose how you want to share this. And this is universal across the entire client look kind of ecosystem. Everything you do can be privatized. You can share it by default with everyone, which doesn't mean every client look user. It means everybody in your account. So if you have a two-person account, it's, it's two. If it's just you, then it's just you. Uh, there's an option here for just me, which means whatever I'm adding, I don't want to be the only person to see this. Even if this contact George Adams is shared with other people, I can add stuff that's private to me. You can also create teams. I want to have the industrial team or the office team or the executive team, whatever. Uh, and that is a, a subset of users that you can do that. Um, you can also assign this to other people. This is just a list of all the other people in your office. But once you're done, you simply click add this update in the bottom and oh, we'll put some text in here at the top. We add it and now you see our note appear here. I spoke to George. You see the deal that we referenced and uh, my name there. So that's as simple and uh, as easy as it gets. Um, okay. All the activities that you schedule, this is where they appear, just kind of roll up. So as, as we go through contact to contact, you're calling people, you're logging what you spoke about, and then you're scheduling the next step, ideally. Um, this is where all of those activities roll up into events and tasks. You can navigate to the calendar of other people. Um, and, and again, all of your activities can be privatized. So if you don't want to share things with other people, you don't have to. Um, you can sync this calendar with your mobile device through uh, this free Google Sync, which, which has nothing to do with email. It just uses this Google tool to do a sync. Uh, you can sync your uh, calendar from Cloudlink into your native calendar in your phone so that when you change things at either end, it, um, it syncs up. It works great. This is kind of the culmination of all the activities and everything you do in Cloudlink. This is called Scoop. So this solves a problem that you probably didn't know you had when it comes to CRM use. So, so one of the things, especially in a team, you do stuff all day long, all kinds of things. And in Client Look, you're linking emails, you're completing appointments, you're, the virtual assistant is logging stuff, a lot of things happen. But you don't know it necessarily. Think about every database system you've ever done. Unless you run some report or you have a meeting to say, okay, John, what happened this week? You don't know what's going on in your database. So. Client solution to that is to create a feed, much like a LinkedIn feed or a Facebook or Twitter, a feed of everything that happens across all users, um, and it displays it in one cohesive list. So you literally, you can scroll down in Scoop and see emails, phone calls, completed th uh, property tours, whatever, in this one place. And of course, this, this abides by all the sharing rules. So if I added an update to a contact that I don't share, it won't appear in Scoop for other people, just for me. But this is the way for you to communicate super efficiently without email um, or physical contact with people. So and if I scroll down here, I can see an example of an email here. 
uh, then it's captured and transcribed and put into the system. So it's you know it's it's comprehensive. Scoop contains every update that you've ever added, every completed activity, completed task, and over time every single email that you've ever linked to the system. So think about then the search capability that you have. So for example, I know at some point I talked to a guy about sewer permits that he needed and he paid top dollar for a property that had those. Um, I don't know if that was an update, was it an appointment, was it an email? So I can come into Scoop here, I can enter a keyword and, and dates, choose categories, and it will mine my system, look for sewer permits in emails, and show me that data. So this becomes over time a super valuable tool to help you mine your database for, uh, for opportunities. Okay, last thing I'm going to talk about is marketing, then I'm going to show you one other new thing. So, so the marketing tool that I want to show you is an example of our MailChimp integration. So we talked about um, sending emails and how easy it is. So here's how it works in ClientLook. So I have connected ClientLook to MailChimp. And you do this in the setup module. You, you plug in your MailChimp ID and it, it links it. And here's capabilities that it provides. Under the options menu in the middle of the screen, I have this option for send MailChimp email. So I click that and I get this pop-up. And it simply displays for me all the templates that I've created and that are stored in MailChimp. So MailChimp, just as an example, does a phenomenal job of allowing me to create brochures and templates and all kinds of stuff. Um, I can paste in templates from other services like Buildout. If I'm using that, they create outstanding uh, output. I can create templates out of those as well. My task here is to simply choose the template that I want to send to the list of people that I've done a search for. And that's the other great thing about the way this works. You can create very targeted searches. Just show me owners of office properties on Main Street. So I choose my template. Up comes this form that asks me, all right, what, what, what's the subject of your email? Do you want to relate it to any deals? Do you want to relate it to any properties? You saw how we connect all that stuff in the back. And then down to the bottom right, I can choose send it now or schedule it for tomorrow or next week or whatever. And I send it and it's gone. So it uses it MailChimp in this case to do that. And here's, here's the payoff. So you'll notice now that we're in the marketing module up at the top, marketing. And this lists for me all of my email campaigns. This is every campaign that I've sent through ClientLook using the connected MailChimp system. So it shows you the status, you know, the send, how many opens, how many clicks. Everything is sortable so you can see your top campaigns and know over time what's worked and what hasn't worked. But if I click into one of these campaigns, this is where we see the actual recipients as linked contacts. So in this case, I'm looking at the opens, this little show list here of the people that were involved in this campaign. I can say, just show me the people that opened my email. And these are the client look contacts that opened it. So I can click on these guys and, and you know, presumably they are higher prospects. This list also contains uh, the clicks, the bounces, the unsubscribes, the whole bit. Um, and then as, the, as you go along here in tabs, I can see all the links that were included in my email. It'll show you how many people clicked on which links and who they were. And of course, if I related to deals or properties, you can see that as well. But the uh, other place where this shows up is within contacts. So up at the top, I'm going to type in Jessica and jump back to that contact record for Jessica that we saw earlier. Remember, we went to the marketing tab of Jessica. This is where you can see for each individual recipient of every any email campaign you ever send, you'll see their history down here below, and you'll see this you know, uh, engagement rate. So this is kind of the second point of connection down to the micro level um, of, of how your contacts have responded. All right, last thing I'm going to close here with in our last few minutes is the mobile app. We get more questions than this probably than anything, and I want to give you the update on what we're working on, what's coming out, when it's coming out, so you'll know um, you'll know the deal here. So you've already seen um, everything in Client Look. All of that is available um, mobily. So if you're using a, an iPad, for example, you can pull up Client Look on an iPad. It works beautifully. It looks just like it does on the web, so you don't have to relearn anything. It's the same experience, um, you know, same deal. What we wanted though was to aspire to putting the entire system your whole business in your pocket through a mobile app. Our first one is going to be with the iPhone, so an iOS uh, app. And here are a couple of screenshots of how this works. This is a contacts list. This is a contact detail page. You'll see it's super simple. 
Okay, you've got phone numbers, you've got company names, anything that looks like a hyperlink is, or if you see a phone number, if you click it, it will dial or email link, you click it, it will send an email. And uh, this is a property record, so all that property detail that you're tracking, client look, is here in your pocket. So before you go into some building, you can pull the property and see all the linked tenants that you know, or the true owner, or whatever you might want, or your, of course your history of updates. This is your calendar, so it will have its own built-in calendaring system uh, and task list management. Um, and this is um, Scoop. So remember we talked about Scoop and how valuable this is. I, I can see using this in a, any, I'm sitting in a lobby waiting for an appointment. I'm going to be flipping through Scoop, figuring out what's you know what's been happening within my office and um, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, oh, last thing here. So it, it also includes this cool little utility for connecting with the virtual assistant. So you go to this little link and say record a VA request. Click this button and it just starts recording. And you talk and you say, Hi, this is Michael. I just met with Alan Buchanan. We talked about this and this. And then you click send, and it sends that off. So it's it's simple, easy, and it's a way to to create a connectivity there between um, you and the VA through the mobile app. All right. This I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the, the different companies that we've uh, talked about. We talked about build out, uh, commercial search, uh, Google, which does the syncing. Mailchimp was the email. The middle one there, the Analyst Pro. This that's the um, Analyst uh, app. RPR is for Realtors over on the right, which does all the demographics, and then of course Excelligent for the property data there. In Client Look, in the Setup module, you'll find an Integrations tab where you'll see all of these, and you'll have the ability to uh, connect. The one that's different is Excelligent. Uh, all the Excelligent integration is done at our end, so Excelligent provides to Client Look a list of Excelligent users. So uh, if you're a Client Look user and you're an Excelligent user, Excelligent should already be turned on for you. If it's not for some reason, contact us. We just have to flip a switch. Uh, 